الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدن ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ماكثين فيه أبدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الواحد الأحد الفرد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمان ونصح للأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد أيها المسلمون أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى وطاعته كما قال في كتابه الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم اتق الله حيث ما كنت وأتبع سيئة الحسنة تمحها وخالق الناس بخلق حسن ثم أما بعد Brothers and sisters in Islam Every blessing that you enjoy, every privilege that you enjoy is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you realize this, don't allow your positions, and, your positions and positions to drive you to look down upon the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these blessings that you enjoy, the positions that you enjoy, you should, you should benefit from them in getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So instead, of boasting over others, you should be humble. You should humble yourself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, وَمَا تَوَاضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَ No one, no one humbles himself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise him higher and higher. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise your status. And describing his sincere worshippers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا And the true and sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the true and sincere worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who walk humbly upon the earth and when the ignorant people address them harshly, they say words of peace. Yes, you are a person holding a high position, a person of influence. You encounter someone, he disrespects you, he's rude in speech. You have the ability of responding, you have the ability of retaliating, but you choose the path of peace for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you victorious here on earth and in the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit you to the highest level of paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in describing Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best human being, the best creature ever created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet he was the humblest person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described him in different ways that he was mercy to mankind. So describing the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضٌ غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكْ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it's mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it's by Allah's mercy upon you and upon the followers of your message that you were kind to the people whom you, who were dealing, whom you were dealing with. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It's by mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you were lenient with your companions. You were lenient with your followers. Had you been heard, had you been harsh in speech and had you been cruel in speech and harsh in heart, they would have disbanded away from you. So pardon them, seek forgiveness for them, and consult them in important issues. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be kind, to be lenient to his followers. And if they happen to commit a mistake, forgive them. Not only that, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. And whenever you want to take any important decision in which 
there is no instruction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then consult them. After listening to them, take a decision. And when you take a final decision, depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse is general in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to be lenient with his followers, but it was revealed under a special circumstance. The second battle in Islam was the battle of Uhud, the second decisive battle in Islam, in which the enemies of Islam grouped together to annihilate the Muslims, to annihilate Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ prepared his companion to repulse the enemy. To cut the long story short, among the strategies of the Prophet ﷺ in order to win this war, he placed 50 archers who were experts in shooting with arrows and bows and with arrows and spears. He placed them on a hill, which was, which was a vantage position, which was a vantage point. He gave them stern instructions that no matter what happens to us, don't leave your posts. Whether we win or we are vanquished, Stay positions where you are. But when they saw Muslims win the battle at the beginning, they descended from the hill. They forgot the stern instructions of the Prophet ﷺ. And because they didn't listen to the Prophet ﷺ, they did not obey his instructions. They incurred a lot of casualties on the battlefield of Uhud. So in the aftermath of this battle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet وسلم, be lenient with them. Don't be harsh with them. Yes, they committed a mistake. They have learned a lesson the hard way and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. Had they won the battle despite, despite neglecting the instructions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would have taken it as a habit that we can be successful even though we don't obey the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach them the hard way that your success, your salvation here on earth and in the hereafter lies first in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in obeying the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and obey the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُحَىٰ Whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said was not from his whims and desires. It was a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they learned the hard way and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be specifically lenient with those 50 archers, but also to be lenient with all the believers if they happen to commit something wrong and to address them in, uh, in the most effective way. Brothers and sisters in Islam, every person, every human being is valued by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every person has a role to play in order to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on different occasions underscored this fact. In a hadith that was narrated by Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, ibghuni fi du'afaikum, fa innama tunsaruna wa turzaquna bi du'afaikum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling his companions, look for me the poor and the weak among you. Seek for me the poor and the weak among you. Bring them to me, treat them well. And actually scholars of the hadith or experts of the prophetic traditions tell us that the Prophet ﷺ meant by this that his companions, whenever they saw any weak person, any poor person, they should bring that person and introduce him to the Messenger ﷺ. And by this, the Messenger ﷺ wanted to deliver a message that every person counts. Whether he's poor or rich, whether he's strong or weak, he can play a role for the sake of Islam and Muslims. And also they say that maybe the Prophet ﷺ wanted them to get a fair share of the booty. Whenever they won battles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to take the properties of the enemies and distribute them among themselves. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wants the poor and the weak who were not able to protect in jihad to have a fair share of the booty. And also they say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to deliver a message that these poor, these weak people, when there is jihad, when there is an opportunity to fight, to defend Islam and Muslims, they had a role to play. So all in all, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
is telling you, do not underestimate any person, whether he's rich or poor, whether he's powerful or weak. Every person is valuable, by, is valuable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Prophet continues, فَإِنَّمَا تُرْزَقُونَ وَتُنْصَرُونَ إِلْ بِضُعْفَائِكُمْ So it means you are given provisions, your means of livelihood are expanded, and you are given victories on the battlefield because of treating well the poor, the needy, and the weak among you. They supplicate for you. Their supplication goes directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the means of getting victory is to treat well the poor, the needy, and the weak among us. You treat them well. You make them happy. They will supplicate for you. Their supplication will go directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mus'ab bin Sa'ad, Mus'ab one of the, a son of one of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, he talks, he says this about his father, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas. He says, رَأَى سَعْدٌ أَنَّ لَهُ فَضْلًا عَلَى مَنْ دُونَهُ فَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هَلْ تُنْصَرُونَ وَتُرْزَقُونَ إِلَّا بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ So Mus'ab says about his father, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas, who was a very strong Muslim, who was valiant. He achieved a lot on the battlefield. He used to kill a lot of enemies. And because of his achievements on the battlefield, and because he was from the tribe of the Quraysh, he thought that he was superior to those who were below him in rank. So the Prophet ﷺ noticed this in him, that maybe he feels because he achieved a lot on the battlefield and he kills a lot of enemies, so he has superiority over others of less achievement than him. The Prophet ﷺ tells him, هَلْ تُنْصَرُونَ وَتُرْزَقُونَ إِلَّا بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ So it means you are not given victory on the battlefield, you are, your, your means of livelihood are not expanded, your sustenance is not expanded except by treating well the poor and the needy and the weak among you. They are happy with you. They supplicate for you. Their supplication goes directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah listens to them and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you victory. So you cannot underestimate the poor. You cannot underestimate the needy. The Prophet ﷺ is cautioning you. Never ever think you are better than them. They are nothing to you. Because of treating them well, you will be successful here on earth and in the hereafter, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you abundantly. At the beginning of the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some polytheist enemies of Islam, especially the wealthy ones, used to think that by virtue of their wealthy, they were loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they would taunt the poor Muslims that we are still better than you. We are richer than you. We have influence more than you. Even if we die today, we will be in a better position than you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this. So the rich... The rich and the influential people of Mecca, the enemies of Islam, the polytheists said that, you know, we are richer than you, we have more children than you believers, and we won't be punished because Allah loves us. This is why he gives us wealth, and because he loves us, he gives us more children than you. So how will he punish us when he has been uh, benevolent to us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered them in the Quran. So whatever you have here, whether it is wealth or children, it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you use it to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you here on earth. And if you don't, Allah will give you a respite. If you don't benefit from this respite to repent to him and you die still an obstinate disbeliever, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will eventually punish you. So unfortunately, even today, some rich people who claim to be Muslims, they still think that because he's rich, he's better than the poor, the needy, and because of his wealth, Allah loves him, and he can do whatever he wants unabated. So this is a lesson for them. In a hadith that was narrated by Haritha, he says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَلَا أَخْبِرُكُمْ بِأَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ قَالُوا بَلَا قَالَ كُلُّ ضَعِيفٍ مُتَضَعِفٍ لَوْ أَقْسَمَ عَلَى اللَّهِ لَا أَبَرَّهِ ثم قال ألا أخبركم بأهل النار قالوا بلى قال كل عطل جواظ مستكبر The Prophet ﷺ was sitting with his companions. So he asked them, 
Won't you like me to tell you about the characteristics of the majority of the people of paradise? They said, well, tell us, O Messenger of Allah. He told them, every weak person, poor person, whom people look down upon because he's shabby, because he's rugged, he doesn't have good clothes, he's poor, he doesn't eat good food. So people look down upon him. But this person is sincere whenever he worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this person is humble. He humbles himself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite the fact that he is poor, he is still humbling himself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this person, because he's poor, because he's weak, people look down upon him. If he swears on something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him fulfill his oath. This person whom people look down upon, if he swears on something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him fulfill his oath. And if he's oppressed and he prays, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer his prayer. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa asked them, Wouldn't, don't you like me to tell you some of the vices of the people who, of the majority of the people in the hellfire? They said, yes, O Messenger of Allah. He says, these are three words. If you interpret them, it could be a full page. But in short, it means every greedy, cruel, and stingy person. Greedy, cruel, and stingy person who is immoral, argumentative, and arrogant. Immoral, argumentative, and arrogant. Even when he's wrong, you point out his mistake, he will still argue to prove that he is in the right. So such people will be the majority of those who will languish in the hellfire. So we have to avoid being characterized as an immoral person, stingy, cruel, argumentative, arrogant, and we have to humble ourselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because nothing is, is permanent here on earth. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not only talk the talk, he also walked the talk. Once a man came to him to seek advice, so a man, a common person, approached the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to seek his advice. So the man, because of the awe of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he respected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mixed with fear, so he respected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at the same time he was afraid of him. And the man began shaking, his flanks were, were trampling. We are trembling. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, Hawin alaik, fa inni lastu bi malik. Inna ma ana ibn umraatin min Quraysh kanat ta'akul al qadid. So the Prophet ﷺ is telling the man, take it easy. Don't be afraid. Don't, uh, don't tremble. I am a, I'm, I'm just a simple person. I'm not a king. I'm not among those kings who used to treat people insolently. I am rather son of a woman from the tribe of Quraysh who used to eat dried meat. In some countries, they call it jerked meat. So because by virtue of the position of the Prophet wasallam, this person in his presence, he was shaking, and the Prophet wasallam comforts him. The Prophet wasallam tells him, take it easy. I'm just a common person. Although I am the best human being, but still in treating others, I am a good example. I am actually the epitome of humbleness to all human beings. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Anas bin Malik, who served the Prophet ﷺ for 10 years, and he testifies that in all those 10 years, the Prophet ﷺ never yelled at him, never shouted at him, even when Anas had done something wrong, the Prophet ﷺ would not shout at him. So Anas bin Malik narrates that the Prophet ﷺ used to have a she camel that was never suppressed in a race. When there was a camel race, the camel of the Prophet ﷺ called al adba it, 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 would, it would always win. So the camel of the Prophet ﷺ was never suppressed by any camel. The she camel of the Prophet ﷺ was never suppressed by any camel in a race. So once a Bedouin came from nowhere on a young camel below the age of six, and he started, uh, he, 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 he started racing with the camel of the Messenger ﷺ. So this camel of the Bedouin won the race. 
The companions of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were upset. How come this man comes from nowhere and his camel outpaces the camel of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is famous as the fastest camel. They were not happy. They were angry. Noticing this, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, حَقُّنِ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَن لَا يَرْتَفِعَ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا وَضَعَ حَقٌّ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَن لَا يَرْتَفِعَ شَيْءٌ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا وَضَعَ It is Allah's law that nothing, nothing will raise higher and higher on earth except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring it down. So no matter how famous you become, how rich you become, time will come when you will go down. If not, time will come, you'll be taken by death. So we have to be humble. There is nothing permanent on earth. And actually in this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam proved to be the epitome of sportsmanship. The messenger of Allah, the best human being, he was not disturbed. It's normal. Although his companions were disturbed that how come a camel from nowhere comes and suppresses the camel of the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a race, they were, they were embarrassed. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not to teach us that nothing is permanent here on earth. We are here on trial and our destiny is when we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to benefit from the, the privileges, the advantages and the blessings that we have to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to invest in this world to prepare for the hereafter. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim wa nafani wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-Azim li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-Ghafur al-Rahim Alhamdulillah iladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadiya law lan hadana Allah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna sayyidana wa habibana muhammadan abiduhu wa rasuluh Brothers and sisters in Islam, historians tell us that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever anyone had a problem and approached him, there was no any intricate protocol to follow. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, no matter who the person was, he would go and solve the problem of that person and he was doing so to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was doing so to show us an example on, be, an example on being humble. So we have to be humble, humble ourselves for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise our status and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will benefit us in different ways. وَصَلُّوا وَسَلِّمُوا عَلَى مَنْ أُمِرْتُمْ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالسَّلَامِ عَلَيْهِ وَمُمًا بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللَّهُمَ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ كَمَا صَلَّيْتَ عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَعَلَى آلِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ كَمَا بَارَكْتَ عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَعَلَى آلِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ أربعة الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجمعين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم ربنا ورب كل شيء فالق الحب والنوى ومنزل التوراة والإنجيل والفرقان نعوذ بك من شر كل شيء أنت آخذ بناصيته يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر المجاهدين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم أعلي كلمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم انصر عبادك المستضعفين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا رخاء سخاء وسائر بلاد المسلمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله, والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة